two. Hello and welcome to the Hoosier.com's postgame wrap-up. I am Keegan Nickerson here with fellow staff writers from the Hoosier.com, Matthew Byrne and Kyler Staley. Here at the Shot and Scene Center where Indiana just fell 80 to 69 to Ohio State. Good comeback at the end, trying to complete the season sweep, but just couldn't get it done. Um, Indiana announced before the game that Trey Galloway and Christian Lander would end up missing this one. And it turned out that they definitely could have used Galloway's perimeter defense as they struggled in that area. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis, 10 points in the first half, really looked like he was just different than what he was at Wisconsin. He was getting to the line more. I know Coach Woodson probably talked to him about that because Woodson said after the Wisconsin game, he's being a little too unselfish, kicking the ball out to be the better in that area. And Taylor, two halves for Xavier Johnson with five turnovers and then kind of popped off in the second half. But free throws at the end of the game really, really impacted how this game kind of ended up, Matt. Yeah, definitely. Uh, IU went nine for 27, 70%. Um, that number uh, at one point in the second half was, I believe, 47%. Uh, so, you know, you come down to the final possessions. Um, Tamar Bates has the ball. Indiana leads 63, 61. Um, and then he takes sort of a force it. He's sort of forced a three-pointer, contested a three-pointer, double win. Uh, Liddell comes down, um, gets the dunk to tie the game 63, 63, send it into overtime. Um, you know, IU just – a couple free throws here and there uh, definitely could have helped uh, secure the win. Um, I guess one example, although, you know, a lot of free throws were missed. Um, Anthony Leal uh, at the end of the half um, missed um, two free throws. Um, now, as you were saying, Keegan, um, Xavier Johnson, um, five turnovers in the first half, only four points in 15 minutes. Um, but I, he, he is exempt um, from the free throw shooting. Um, he got to the line 10 times and made all 10 of his free throws. But just, you know, another case where free throws are just killer. Um, and if IU made maybe two or three more, could have made it a two possession game um, at the end, like I mentioned, a three, uh, three point game uh, forced Ohio State to come down and shoot a three pointer uh, instead of getting a bucket down low. And ultimately, I think that's just one of the big reasons that sort of cost him in this one. Yeah, absolutely. And he talked about Leo's at the end of the half, and it's just a huge, huge momentum swing. If you get those two, you go into the locker room, you're, you're in a good mood, you're, you're hyped up, but you can't get them. And it's free, and it was a bad foul by Ohio State, too. But something else to talk about here, Miller Cop seven points in the second half and then sat down for 15 minutes near the end. Um, he really sparked the comeback. He, he got some threes, he got some free throws, and then he sat for 15 minutes until Coach Woodson had to pull him out near the end when Xavier Johnson committed a foul in overtime. But that overtime period and the last about minute of the first half, that collapse really, really just cost Indiana. Yeah, um, I can kind of chime in on that. Um, it really was that last 247 um, of regulation where things just kind of went um, – just kind of unraveled and right in front of our faces. Um, I mean, Indiana was up four with a minute 23 left. Um, turnover. Um, Ohio State hits those two free throws. Um, and then Indiana was forced to take a really, really bad end of the shot clock, uh, Tamar Bates three, um, which that ended up going towards the, you know, the little dunk. Um, and then IU had a really poor uh, final possession at the end of regulation. Um, and then overtime hit, you know, that spark that Indiana had in the second half was just completely gone. It just disappeared. Um, they were, I think it was outscored, pulling up my stats here, I think they were outscored 21 to 6, um, and then ended up losing by 11 in overtime um, with that final 247. Um, I missed 10 of their 11 shots. Just can't do it. And after dominating the boards um, for the majority of the game, they were out rebounded eight to zero, and Indiana had zero rebounds in overtime. It's just stuff that's like it's just amazing with this team's inability to finish games. Um, this is back to back games uh, against quad one teams that they could have won, they could have finished, and they could have sealed their NCAA tournament hopes, um, but they just can't get it done. They couldn't finish. And tonight's was, was especially amazing um, just to watch. Yeah, definitely tough. Um, a lot of Indiana fans actually sit next to me with some IU and who, who, who's your chance? And then they go home disappointed because their team collapses. Yeah. And it feels like it's just something different every single time. And you've got Trace, good free throws against Wisconsin, decent tonight, not great. But as a big man, you can't expect much. You got Xavier Johnson on 10 for 10. Free throws were why you're losing before. Now it's something completely different. It's rebounding, it's turnovers in the first half. So, 
just a lot to figure out and they're going to have to put together a pretty, pretty impressive run here at the end to get to the tournament, knocking off Purdue, making a run in the big 10 tournament. But yeah, so definitely an interesting one, a lot, a lot to go over, but we don't have a lot of time for that. Um, Indiana falls 80 to 69 here at the shot and scene center to Ohio state. I'm Keegan Nixon. That's Kyler Staley and Matthew Byrne. And we will see you next time.